de mare. Hello, 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 and welcome, Africa Week. Welcome back. I hope you refresh your pages. Look who we're here with. Here we are with the I Am More Making Ourselves Resilient Everyday team. We're going to talk, up there. I'm going to give a quick summary. They're going to help with uh, empowerment, resilience. They're going to give tips and skills for practicing this resilience and empowerment in their every in everyday lives. So listen up, take notes, everybody. <laughs> and I want to read this out very clearly. People are going to leave with the understanding that they, they are more than the worst thing that's happened to them. And, and you'll be able to identify a couple ways in your life um, that this applies and and be able to create your own resilience and empowerment. And so we're going to jump right into this with Jeanette. Jeanette, tell us. Who are you and why is I am more important to you? Hi everyone, my name is Jeanette Nunga and I am a co-founder of I am more and um, I have been a part of this progress since my senior year of high school and this program means a lot to me because it has helped me become this resilient, this dynamic, beautiful individual who knows herself and who is fearless to discover the other sides of herself. Um, with this program, I've learned to really tap into my skills, skills that I never thought I had, skills that I really didn't believe that I could do or improve on, um, skills such as writing, um, poetry, and really public speaking has really been um, a tool that I use when I speak with a lot of people when I go to different events. Um, with this program, I've really been able to learn how to love myself in a way that I didn't know before. Um, that's because I, I discovered different traits about myself, and I think everyone really does deserve to kind of explore that side of themselves. Um, with this program, I've been able to, um, like I said earlier, tap into some of my skills and my passions. And currently, I'm in training to become a facilitator. Um, I will have more opportunities to teach at different events and share the wisdom that God has given me throughout my life journey. And so um, that's a little bit about myself. I'm also a student. I'm, I'm studying to become a midwife. I'm very passionate in all things women. Yeah. Awesome. Thank you so much. And so everybody brought some videos today. And you have uh, this first video is learning how to uh, love yourself. All right. Uh, wait, before you play it, so this video um, was created to, to I guess, show my journey through self-love. Um, it's a little hard to watch. If you understand the message, it's going to be hard to watch because it comes from deep within. Um, but it's, it's really authentic, and it, it kind of shows my vulnerability when it comes to um, accepting and loving who I am. But it does end with the positive notes, so go ahead and play this. When the world unravels before you, When your dreams are crumbling stones. When everything you dare to touch sets on fire. And all around you is ash and smoke. Remember this. Rock bottom is a perfect place for rebuilding. Remember that you are your mother's daughter. Your grandmother's answered prayers. A 
A whole bloodline of women who bend in response to the raging winds. There is nothing. There is nothing, nothing broken here. Nothing damaged or discarded. Each scar is a badge of honor. Every misstep, a victory dance waiting to happen. You, you are women becoming. Learning the complicated language of forgiveness. The intricate lessons of the universe and your heart is just a muscle. It needs exercise. And you were born for this sort of heavy lifting. You were born one part saint, one part warrior woman. Loving yourself without shame is the most important thing. have to fight for yes <laughs> yes yeah so i really um i i'm proud of of this thing that i created because a lot of people not only women a lot of people men and women do go through this phase where they start to believe the things that people tell them to believe. Yes. They start to internalize the negative perspectives of people that they have for themselves. And so it kind of damages your heart. It damages the way you think about yourself. It contaminates you. And so I think that when we recognize that this particular thing that we're facing right now, it doesn't have to be our reality. And so we get to define ourselves. We get to write our own story. And so when you kind of recognize that and make that decision, that choice to say, you know what, I'm not going to allow myself to be defeated by these words or these people or this situation, and I'm going to choose myself above everything else. And that's the, that's the journey of self-love for me. And so yes. I'm really proud of that. Yeah. Beautiful. Um, and that really comes through in your in your video. It's it's the first time I watched it, I had tears in my eyes. And, and it's something that at any point in your life, it doesn't matter how old or young, young you are, we have to remind ourselves of this. So I'm glad that you've put it into video form so that people can continue to return to it. You know, now it's now it is eternal. <laughs> um, so tell us about the second video, Resiliency and Rhythm. Yeah, so a few months ago we had an event and um, um, Resiliency and Rhythm was the title of the event. And we had different people, different young people showcasing their talents. We had poetry, we had art, we had music, we had so many things. And one of the things that took place at the event was a fashion show. And the fashion show wasn't necessarily walking to show off your clothes, but we were walking and the clothes that we wore told the story for us. And so okay. um, we had we recorded uh, prior to the event an audio of, of our, our journey. And we wore clothing that represented the particular stages of our lives. And so we have this is there's three parts to this video. The first okay. part describes my life in the refugee camp. That's where I was born. I was born in a refugee camp in Tanzania. The refugee camp is called Nyarugusu. And so this part describes the lifestyle that I had. The second part of the video describes my life in the US when I came to the US. And the third part of the video describes my life to be or what my life will look like or how I want my life to be like. Okay, awesome. Let me I was born as Tosha Kitungano on February 19, 2009, in Yarugusu, Tanzania, the biggest refugee camp in East Africa. I changed my name from Tosha as part of my healing journey. 
My family left the Democratic Republic of Congo, 64 hours old because there was too much violence and death around them. For generations before I was born, my family had only known war and running away from violence. We are called Wakimizi, which means runaways. I had no choice but to grow fast, sacrificing the childhood I longed for. I spent my childhood knowing nothing but poverty. I fought against the powerful influences of witchcraft, against starvation and malaria. I learned early my womanly duties, such as cleaning our home, washing clothes, and walking a great distance to fetch water. I started my training to learn farming and planting food, which was my family's only way of eating regularly. Growing up, I faced psychological trauma that put me in a place of fear and emotional neglect. For so long, I have always felt like I was carrying a burden of shame and guilt because of what happened to me and because of the childhood that I lost. I never considered my life beyond the refugee camp. but I really like that you started with the love video and sort of 
infuse everybody with that and then show this sort of like past, you know, the past and like what you're working up to and where you came from the growth. You know, it, it's it's like before you're talking about a representation that people need to see that that they can change, that they can't they can create opportunity for themselves and, and you you showed that and look you're already on your way to becoming a midwife, right? So you're sort of in 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 mid transition to what you you decided before what you were gonna do. And that's that's exciting. Thank you for sharing that. Yeah, thank you. Jeff Betty. Hey. Hello. I said team right this time, eh? Yeah. Okay, Jafetti, who are you? Who are you, Jafetti? Why is I am more important to you? So, uh, my name is Jafetti Nyongbeti Imana, and I am right now. I'm doing marketing. Well, I'm going to PSU to do marketing, and my future job is to obviously work at Nike. I love sports, so I want to be able to do any like video production for, um for Nike and just want to stay involved with uh, uh, sports and all that stuff. Um, but the reason why I am more so important to me is because I am more has given me a chance for me to be heard and for um, gave me a platform for um, for me to express my voice. And it has made me more confident, more outgoing mm -hmm. and more resilient. Uh, I am more is a great place for me to learn uh, for me to grow spiritually and mentally and physically. And I think it's just a great platform for uh, you to express and um, express their dreams and their aspiration. And it's definitely a supporting environment. That's Was it hard for you so to much. use your voice before and show up as you before? Yeah, like I said, when I grew up here, I was like always like a really shy person. I was just like to myself, like I did stuff, but like I really didn't socialize as much as I should have been. And I was just like really quiet just because like uh, my upbringing, like the way I grew up, it was just like I'd never really like had that confidence to just speak to a lot yes. of people unless he was like a Yeah. Friend. How did you find I Am More? Um, so I actually found it from Tosha. I was just one of the, uh, she came to one of her classes and she presented. And then she, um, she told me it would be a great opportunity. And I went to go talk to Ms. Renee. And Ms. Renee, she was really like, um, she, she wanted me in the group. She was really like, she pushed me to, for me to continue to go on there. And she was like, I said, she was really, um, arm welcome. She, she just welcomed me in with a lot of love. And that's, I just, I stuck. I stuck to it ever since, and it has really helped me grow. And so, um, another question: Did you do you now teach others what you learned at I am more? Yeah, I do. That's definitely one of the thing I am more is um, aspiring to do is we are trying to teach the tools that we have learned to other people so they can get out of their shells and um, break those um, limitations, those boundaries that has been put on them. And um, so one of the things like we have done is uh, we went to a trip uh, in Philadelphia and they kind of did like a little conference. And that was a good opportunity for us to kind of teach our story and um, give back to to the adults there that was there to learn that uh, wanted to help and um, educate and inspire youth. That's awesome. So it sounds like you're you're sort of teaching workshops of sort of your own life experience through like through how you have gone through the personal experience of telling your story and becoming uh, you know more open and resilient. Then you go and teach other people to do the same thing of all ages. It sounds like. Yeah, exactly. Okay. Okay. What's your favorite thing? Like, what's your favorite experience that you've had with this group so far? If you can uh, name, one, I'm sure you've had many. <laughs> Like I said, my favorite experience so far has when we went to um, when we went to so we went to New York, Philadelphia, and I think it was Georgia. It was those three places, and it was like one week long trip. And I love that trip just because it gave us an opportunity as the the youth that went there to really bond and really get to know each other. And at the same time, we also got to perform 
which was pretty nice. And then, like I said, we also did that workshop over there. And that workshop just gave us, was a way for us as youth to give back to the adults and kind of teach them um, the way that we want to be taught and the way um, we as youth um, think. And we are we are not just like, instead of them just always belonging, like um, looking down to us, they should, you know, actually be looking up to us. And we are, as youth, we are actually really like intelligent and knowledgeable and um it's like it was just a great way for us to learn um the adults kind of and then for them to just kind of like uh for them to actually just sit back and actually just listen to us for for a chance you know and we kind of like um tell them what they need to hear whether they like it or not and it's like this is what we as uh, youth are going through and this is how we need to be helped and this is how we should be helped Yes, I love that. This is something I think is important for us to give youth the voice that they need to communicate themselves and grow. And I'm really glad. That's a special thing about your program that it's multi generational. Oh yeah, and for sure. Leadership roles at your at your age. That's fantastic. Yeah, there's um, a video too that I'm gonna play as well. Yes, we have your video right here. Let me bring yeah. it up. Do you want to tell us anything about this video before I I start it? Yeah, it's kind of like, uh, so it was me, Tosha, and Rose. We were one of the people that did the fashion show for Some Minds. The video is just going to be my part of the fashion show. And kind of basically, it's just going to kind of tell my story. Uh -huh. Kind of the things that I kind of went through and then how I fought that and how I basically was able to um, find that resilience and find my, my, um, my worth and, you know, actually get to find out that I am more. Okay, awesome. And I'll play the whole video, correct? Yeah, thank you. Okay, all right, here we go. I still remember this like it was just yesterday. It was just a couple months into my first year of middle school, and there were about four white boys with blonde hair that continued to bully me through my sixth grade and seventh grade year. I still remember all the time they would walk past me and start pushing me and insulting me and disrespecting my culture or calling me an African booty scratcher, saying I was poor, I was a cultureless person, I'm a starving African, and that I need to go back to Africa because I'm too dumb to be an American. As they continue to take advantage of their power and privilege, they also continue to make me feel powerless and unwanted. And back then, I was always too scared to go to the teachers, the principal, or any adult at the school. So days, weeks, and months passed as I let them continue on stereotyping me, commodifying me, and destroying my confidence. They continued to put me down so much that I started believing in hatred to the point where I didn't want to be African anymore. I wanted to lose all trace of my culture tradition, and way of life. I didn't want to dress as an African. I didn't want to eat, look, sound, or smell like an African anymore. place of love, a place of this, 
a place full of kids, a place of peace, a place of fun, a place of friendship. I am from a loving family who are my precious stone, more special than Lord. I am from the a role model, and having the confidence to speak my opinion. Striving for success and becoming a first generation and my family to go to college with all which means this is only the beginning. I have used the challenges I have faced as an opportunity to succeed in my new American culture, as well as stay true to myself and my African heritage. Mastering these challenges has enabled me to be a better version of myself. One who is proud of my culture, beauty, and isn't afraid to be different. Or stuck in a box of labels from society. I will use my college experience and expertise to give back to my community. I will share my time, knowledge, and learning. Specifically, I would like to share my experience of being a black professional in the sports industry. Being able to provide mentorship is something I value now and would like to give it back to you in my community and around the world. And by creating an affordable training gym, I will have the opportunity to train and also mentor young men. So thank you so much for sharing that. Thank, thank you. you. Give me the platform to be able to do it. Yeah. Yeah, I hope you all come back in September. We have another event in September. I'm I'm just so excited to be connected with you all. <laughs> all right. Thank uh, you. Thank you. Uh, hello. Hello. Hi. Belize. Belize, who are you and why is I am more important to you? Uh, my name is Belize Nguyen. I'm an 18 year old senior or rising senior going to high school. Um, and I, I more recently joined I am more. Um, and so I am more has, you know, prior to I am more, I was doing a lot of stuff, um, and, and succeeding in a way, but I think I am more has allowed me to start thinking more about su success in regards to, um, internal development, um, regarding love for myself knowing how to speak up for myself, knowing my worth. Um, and so I'm really excited uh, to be representing I Am More Youth and to be, you know, just being part of the um, work that I Am More continues That's to That's awesome. Do and let me ask you, what drew you, like, originally what drew you to them? So, um... And Renee, I think, I don't remember exactly when they asked me to join, but I remember um, I like saw a few youth performing. So I was invited to one of their events to perform. And there were two um, girls, who, two uh, women who were part of the um, I Am More Youth who were presenting a poem. And, you know, it was really powerful to me. And I felt that Renee is such a guiding force in all everything that I am more does. And I love that, you know, she, I feel like not just um, someone who's younger than her or just someone who isn't as wise as her, even though she's very wise. Um, I feel like she treats me as her equal. And I, and that's often what a lot of youth want is to be treated as an equal, to be listened to, to, you know, be understood. And I love that. With you know, I, I think that, that, that is your journey, all of you, but your journey of of discovering how to be heard um, as as equals, you know, mm -hmm. equal in in your in your wisdom and in your experience is is something that's really important, especially for the revolution that's going around on right now for black people. We're now all of us are in Portland for those of you who are tuning in. Um, if you don't know what's going on in Portland. Uh, and one of the things I see over and over again when talking about activism and movements is this idea of we have to do it differently. We cannot 
fight this revolution and get yeah. equality for for black people and people uh, and of African descent in the United States here by doing things always the way we've been doing things. And so what you touched on just now mm -hmm. about about being understood and being heard is so important because I truly believe that how we are going to find balance in this country anyway, and, and how we are going to uh, lift up, you know, our, our family um, is, is going to come from youth like all of you. And you have to be heard and be understood in order right. to, for that to happen. Um, okay. So you have a video for us. Yes, um, so this video is a, like video, a poem video I made in part in partnership with AGE, which is Advancing Gender Equity in the Arts. And okay. I, I just, I'll just let it be, a, show it for itself, so. Okay, <laughs> I love it. I love it. Let me cue it up here. Night skies cover our body with soft wrappings that glisten under the moon's shine. Our feet stomp the floor as we move to rhythms we do not know. Freedom we sing, not knowing our freedom is we. We live unseen, falling paths to world we form between the triangles above our feet. With a stride so confident in rolled sleeves ready for the day's labor. Cultivating grounds before there was ground. When suffocation was justice and Emmett Till was not history. Before there was a sun bright enough for you to see our work. We are the puppeteers to your motion, the ink to your unwritten stories, figures hidden by the night skies. We are Shirley Chisholm, unwilling to be bound by laws that subject us to its rule, but we the rules that bind the law to our word. We are Marsha P. Johnson, redefining what it means to be, singing young or old, poor or rich, black woman is me. We are Phyllis Whitley, hands freed from cotton's prick, poetry unable to be silenced by society's whip. We are Harriet Tubman, debilitating fears that do not hold us from our ancestral duty, commander of armies of who once held her slave. We are Mammy Till Moberly, with fists in the air and voices spread wide, a voice for her baby who could no longer breathe. We are Coretta Scott King, continuing the words, I have a dream for the kings that have rested, for I too have a dream that the work of a shadow might be seen and accepted. We are Michelle Obama, equipping generations of shadows with the advancements to be seen, to exist, we are Ava DuVernay, giving lenses to the truths of our suffering, giving sky vision to the hell down below. We are Brianna Taylor, mowed down Brianna by Taylor. freedom's barrel, mowed with down only by oops as barrel. reason for her peril, only oops giving us strength with her last breath, with us, with us arm in arm, liberation even in death. We are the sword burned within our weary feet, we are undefined lines that beat the drums of our freedom. We are reflections of the night's gone. We are the hidden figures behind the truths of a man. Oh, what a shadow of a woman. Beautiful. That was beautiful. Thank you. Thank you. Um, thank you so much. It is specifically because um, I think during the Black Lives Matter movement, I've been noticing a lot of disregard for the Black women who also are being shot by the police, who have also been leaders of this movement, who've been, you know, kind of hidden um, or shadowed uh, in the shadow of the man 
in a lot of these movements. And so I wanted to represent that in um, the work that I do. I'm, I'm so appreciative that you, you, you accomplished that <laughs> in this video. And, and I saw some of those Portland references and I'm just like, yeah. I'm, I'm feeling it. I live downtown. So I, uh, <laughs> and somebody's saying word, sound and power. Beto, who is, who's the, uh, our partner in this event. Uh, he's saying word, sound and power. And, and that's what you have. So thank you. Yeah, and the video actually for the protest was in, of a protest that I went to um, this like few past past few weeks. So it's an actual protest in Portland. Yes. Um, so I just want that to be noticed because we haven't gotten too far from you know the civil rights you know movement that happened. So. Yes. Thank you. And those pictures of the moms and their babies. Well, I was just talking about with my, my friend how everywhere around the world people have been writing mama, mm -hmm. mom, mama. It's, um, uh, Renee says that you're part of a nonprofit. Yes. So, um, one? yeah, I'm the president of a youth led nonprofit, um, and it's called Youth Ending Slavery. And we work to educate people about human trafficking issues especially uh -huh. in Portland as yes. um, there is like, as we've seen during the protests also the, uh, um, and during this time because of the pandemic, there is a higher rise of um, people being trafficked. And so we go to like schools and present about what's going on in regards to labor trafficking, sex trafficking and all other forms of trafficking. And um, we hold conferences and we we have a bunch of partners, um, organization. Yeah. Partners. So yeah, I would love for you later to come in. If somebody if somebody knows it, please put it in the in the feed. But I'd love for you to come to Africa Week 2020 later and put it in the feed because we have other people who have come through Africa Week who do those very things. Mm -hmm. And so maybe there's a way for you to to bond. Maybe there's a match there. Oh, there we go. Youth at youthendingslavery.org. Renee has your back. <laughs> <laughs> yes, thanks, uh, okay. Thank you so much, Belize. So, um, so empowering. I, I appreciate you, girl. Thank you. All right. And now we have Faiza. Faiza, hello. Hello. How's it going? So Thank my you. name is Faiza Jama. I am 21 years old. I was born in Somalia, but I grew up here in Portland, Oregon. And for me, why I am more so important is because it literally changed my life around. And um, I wear this necklace that's of a butterfly because when I first came into I Am More, I was like this little caterpillar that was so scared of the world, that had so much fears and limitations. And I just didn't think that there was so much that I could do in my life. And I didn't have really much belief in myself. I didn't have any goals. I didn't have, I had goals and ambitions, but I just didn't know what to do with it because I felt like life knocked me down so many times and beat me down so many times. And I just didn't have the tools as a young person to like pick myself back up. And it's just like, you know what? I've been through so much, but how do I get back up? How do I find those resources? How do I find those tools? And then luckily um, I knew Renee for a long time because she was a mentor and my teacher for me in high school. And then I went away for school um, outside of my state and I went to an all black school and then I came back and then I bumped into Renee and I am more. And then that's how I joined. I am. Wow. More, and I well, I'm more. so glad that you all connected. I wonder how, how long have you been with I am more a couple of years? You said what has been sort of yes, one of the years. profound experiences, like what are your favorite experiences with them so far? Um, the fact that it's not every day that I'm in a room and it's uh -huh. young people running things. It's young people writing down their dreams and not only just writing it down on a piece of paper and just leaving it there, but uh -huh. turning that into something more tangible. And we're in this, and just kind of realizing that, oh, maybe the way we've been seeing things doesn't have to be the way we see things. Like we can learn to establish our own self as a brand. We can turn our tragedies to trophies. We can switch our life around. We can redefine and rewrite our story. And the fact that I have other youth doing the same thing is just very empowering because it's not every day that I'm in a room like that with that much 
power and resiliency and strength and just people building one another. Yeah. So that's my favorite part about I am more. That's beautiful. And it's revolutionary because yes. we are taught to not build each other up. Yes. You yes. know, so so the fact that we're you're going against the grain and that and that you're liking it. Yes. Right? It's, it. it's not a task. Like you're you obviously you're glowing when you're talking about it. So yes. Yeah, I'm I'm thank you for sharing that with us. You have a video. Yes, I do. Okay. Um, do you want to tell us about the video a little bit but while I queue it up? Yes, yeah, so the video um was also something that I performed that rhythm and resiliency about a couple of months ago along with um Jeanette and Jafetti. Uh -huh. Part of what I'm talking about here is um how we are we need to like remove the labels that got placed up in our on ourselves and on our lives and how we when we move through life we're kind of unaware about how society and people and our families and our friends have thrown labels at us whether mm -hmm. we're aware of it or unaware of it and how we need to become conscious of those labels yes living life you know by throwing those labels off and saying you know what these things don't define me anymore what my parents said don't define me no more what my friend says what my what society says doesn't have to define me anymore and it's a matter of you know blossoming into this butterfly and breaking out of the shell and shedding and redefining yourselves and how and for me that was one of the most um important things in my journey and kind of what helped me blossom into this beautiful woman today yes knowing that oh these labels yes they've been placed upon me but they don't have to define me anymore I personally believe that Jenga is the only game that serves as a perfect metaphor for life. We all start off as a perfect tower or board that's neatly stacked with no damages, scratch, tears, or damages. And as we grow and get a taste of this game called life, we start to realize that everyone has a different experience and everyone plays it differently. For some of us, we love, make, we love taking risks, we love living life on the edge, and we love making dangerous moves. While for others, we love playing it safe. For some, making the next move is easy. We know exactly what to do. But for others, one wrong move and everything can come crumbling down. After a while, you start to realize that this game is not only being played by you, but your mom, your dad, your sister, your aunt, your uncle, your kids, etc. are all playing it with you too. And whatever move you make is affecting them, and whatever move they make is affecting you. Sometimes we're unaware of the effects that we have on other people. Take my life, for example. I had a wonderful upbringing. I had a childhood filled with memories, like my grandmother telling us stories in the deserts of Somalia under a big red tree we had. Or my father taking me up and down a hill with him near my side as he teaches me how to ride a bike. Or my family going to water parks even though none of us knew how to swim. But it was the times and memories we shared that mattered. After moving to the United States and living here for a few years, at the age of 14, my life went upside down. I started to witness my parents constantly arguing and my father using substances like alcohol to cope with his trauma. Every night for two years, whenever my dad would come home from work and turn the key to unlock the door, I would wake up. I could smell the alcohol in the hallway as, he, as I pretend to use the bathroom to see if he's okay, to see if he can walk straight, or to see if he would leave again to buy more alcohol. I could hear my mother telling him in the kitchen, keep it down. You're being too loud. Stop breaking things before the kids wake up. For two years, I never got a good night's sleep. I would go to school tired, unable to focus, and I wouldn't be able to do my work. This led to poor grades coming home and my parents yelling at me for having those poor grades. I got labeled dumb, irresponsible, and stupid. After months and months and months of this going on, my father finally moved out. But my father's absence left a void and emptiness inside my heart. I got labeled shy and a loner. Though my father moved out, there were no more late night arguments and a drunk father, but I was soon faced with another hurdle. The cycle came again, this time my mother, and she too had traumas that she didn't know how to cope with in a healthy way. So I beat myself up for it, for not being able to do anything. And whenever I tried, I was told, you're only a kid, what do you know, you're too young. I got labeled useless, a troublemaker, destructive, and that I had anger problems. Besides home, I still had school that awaits me. 
I was faced with cultural differences, language barrier, bullying, and nobody to talk to. I was told by people that look like me, you're not black. You don't have black people nose or black people hair. Go back to your country. You're just a dark-skinned Caucasian. What does that even mean? So I started to cover up my hair and wear the hijab. Then the funny questions came again. Do you shower with that on? Do you sleep with that on? Were you born with that? Are you a terrorist? I got labeled invisible, depressive, had low self-esteem in them. I had no one to talk to. My parents were facing their own traumas and needed somebody to talk to. And I was afraid to talk to my teachers and counselors because if I was told, if you take what happens in your house outside, DHS will come to and take you and your siblings. I had nothing or nobody to remind me that I was beautiful, that I was powerful, that I was amazing. So I started to believe the labels that got put upon me. I didn't dream anymore. I couldn't express myself anymore. These labels were the things that controlled me, from the way that I talked to the way that I walked. I was walking with my head down and totally forgot who I was. So as beautiful, as amazing, as wonderful as you are, I leave you with these two questions. What labels got put upon you that you believed were true about you? And if the labels that were put upon you were visible and you felt the weight of it, would you actually do something about it? Thank you. a label that you have been called. Faiza, you have a t-shirt line you're designing. Yes, that's something that I've been wanting to work on for a while and it's just like, I feel like it's the time now, it's uh, removing the labels and I, it's something that when people wear, I want them to remember that you're more than these labels and to live beyond the labels. So I've been working on that now. Friend, when when you develop it, will you share it with us at Africa Week 2020 and we will share it with people? Definitely. And for all of you, listen, please keep connected with us. I don't know if you're all on Facebook, but we're Africa Week 2020. Let us know what's going on. And and if you have something big that's coming up, let contact me and let us know because then we'll bring you back for like an interview or a chat or maybe we'll put you on a panel for something you know about you all are able to do this and we we want more youth voices this is one of the things that dima and i the organize the co-organizers of africa we talk about all the time we need more elders we need more youth because it's not just about us in the middle and you all have these voices and and i'm just i'm moved by all of you thank you and thank you for providing the space Yes, thank you. Thank you for being here. Um, maybe we should all just say a, a thank you and bye bye. <laughs> you, I am you. Thank You're you. awesome. Thank you. Bye.